NFTs are without a shadow of a doubt one of the most popular and controversial asset types to ever grace their presence in the crypto world. If you've heard of the Bored Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks, or Logan Paul's laughable Crypto Zoo project, as recently investigated by CoffeeZilla, then you'll know that NFTs have not had the best of limelight in recent times, with most people calling them scams. And a lot of NFT projects out there probably are. But I think a lot of people still aren't exactly sure what NFTs actually are and ultimately what their true power is. So let me break it down for you so that it's crystal clear. NFT is short for non-fungible token, which sounds more like unnecessary jargon, but it is necessary. The definition of fungible, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is interchangeable. This is a characteristic of most financial instruments and markets. In other words, it is something that can exist and that can be exchanged like for like and carries no significant change in value. An example of this would be you and your best mate both pulled out a $10 bill from your wallets and proceeded to swap them with one another. Ultimately, you both now have a different physical $10 bill, but there is no change in value. You can both still spend your $10 anywhere that accepts them as standard currency. Ultimately, a $10 bill is still a $10 bill and it's still worth $10. The $10 bills that were exchanged are what we call fungible, hence the definition. Now, non-fungible simply means the opposite, i.e. What you're trying to trade is not fungible. This would be the equivalent to me trading my house with someone else's. They potentially might be worth similar value, but cannot actually be valued at the same. In some ways, they are wholly unique, although this isn't always the case. So that's the non-fungible part. Now onto the token part. Well, this is just a representation of a cryptocurrency asset on the blockchain. A token is basically the equivalent of a dollar in the real world, or a euro, or a pound. Often, tokens within the crypto world can only be used in specific circumstances and for specific purposes. Although there are tokens out there that can be used for many different purposes and sometimes even across multiple blockchains. Anyway, back to our NFT. We now know that it's something unique that cannot be substituted with something similar. Note, this is not to be confused with the trading and exchange of that NFT as that is entirely possible. For instance, if I wanted to sell my NFT or give it to someone else. And the way NFTs have typically been depicted are in the form of art. Now really, this is debatable as to whether some of them have any art at all. If you've seen an example of a crypto punk, there's hardly anything artistic about their look and feel. And for a time, NFTs were literally known in the cryptocurrency space for being pictures and little else. One of the most expensive NFTs to ever sell was CryptoPunk 5822 for a whopping $23.7 million. And if you've seen it, you'll be wondering just why on earth it fetched such an inordinate amount of money. So are NFTs just unique pictures, I hear you asking yourself? Well, not exactly, but a lot of people thought and still think that this is the case. The real idea behind an NFT is to use them to pair with assets, items, products, or any other real-world digital asset to provide a mechanism of ownership. An easy way to understand this is to think of your favorite music artist and one of their greatest songs. If NFTs were used in the music world, then an NFT might be used to provide digital ownership of said song from said artist. It's even possible that through the use of smart contracts, which is a topic for another video, to provide access to various file storage platforms and specifically files that you have access to and own, simply for holding the NFT. In the case of our favourite song, this might be an original recording, the stem files, or anything related to that song from the artist. The overall premise is that if you own the NFT, then technically you own what is attached to it. And that includes any shoddy artwork that might come with it and any utility that's attached to it as well. Now, this is where it gets interesting, particularly if you're looking to make money in the crypto and DeFi space. Utility is typically known as a benefit for holding an NFT or an asset, i.e. if you have the NFT in your crypto wallet, then you get whatever is attached to that NFT. Typically, the sky is the limit in terms of what you could attach. Things like gym memberships, VIP access to backstage at music shows, access to online communities and places in the metaverse or the real world. But probably the most popular use of the utility NFTs is actually in the investment space and passive income. Earlier on, we discover that by using smart contracts, which are basically automated agreements, that we can technically have NFTs that are connected to projects specifically returning revenue and rewards directly to your wallet. Imagine if you could just buy an NFT, put it in your crypto wallet, and then receive dividends, shareholdings, or trading rewards with literally no action. Well, this is definitely possible. In fact, I have a plethora of investments in NFTs doing exactly this. Some pay it in Bitcoin, others pay it in things like stable coins, which are effectively dollar value equivalents, and others pay out in rewards specifically in tokens for specific blockchains or services. The point is that these things are more commonplace than you might think. Now, with stock trading and forex trading become one of the most sought after skills and potential reward mechanisms in the crypto space, then those with the knowledge and expertise to deliver profit using these instruments are highly sought after. After all, if you could have your own dedicated stock trader who was going to grow your money over a long period of time with little input from you, 
then imagine doing the same thing in the crypto space with a lot more upside potential due to the volatility and opportunity to make money. Some people even make a full-time living doing this. However, without the skills to trade and without the desire to learn this niche skill set inside out, then NFTs might be an avenue to consider. Basically, by holding an NFT, you could be paid out rewards from professional traders automatically. Another strong use case for NFTs recently has been the rise of cryptocurrency mining. Blockchains like Bitcoin operate in something called a proof-of-work consensus mechanism. Basically, high-powered computers are used to solve complex algorithms and ultimately provide computing power to the blockchain in order to verify transactions made on the blockchain. Mining Bitcoin can be a very expensive affair, costing tens of thousands of dollars to mine even the smallest amount of Bitcoin. So going into this for yourself might not be the best way to spend your money, but you could invest in an NFT, which provides Bitcoin mining rewards directly to your crypto wallet. This way, you don't have the hassle of setup costs and you get rewards drip fed to you based on your NFT value and how many you have. Now this is all good and well. You can get unique rewards and benefits for owning the NFTs. But what about when we don't want the NFT anymore? What do we do? Well, that is one beauty of the mechanism that cannot be ignored. I mentioned earlier in the video that it's possible to trade or sell NFTs on the open market as well. You'd often do this on an NFT marketplace, which is kind of like an eBay for NFTs. You put your NFTs up for sale for whatever price you like, and if someone makes an offering you accept, then a smart contract does the rest. And of course, you don't have to deal with all those awful delivery companies when you're doing real product shipping on eBay. This has to be a huge win. We've all received a box with the words fragile on it that have been conveniently thrown over your back gate and smashed into a gazillion atoms. The reusability and recycle value of some NFTs is really powerful, and I don't think it will be long before you start to see NFTs attached to real world businesses. Smartphone apps are already being used to provide and govern access to some gym and fitness clubs. Imagine taking that a step further and using the open market in the crypto world to transfer the ownership rights of the NFT and subsequently the membership to someone else. The concept is pretty crazy and the use cases appear to be endless. What about car leasing or car ownership? That's a huge use case. What about property deeds or real estate or land ownership all handled through NFTs? Yes, please. Now, of course, there is a long way to go to bring NFTs into the main, but a lot of people forget that these concepts are still so early to the modern world, despite them being around for a fair few years. The long and short of it is that NFTs aren't just the JPEG spammy picture file that you get from spending 25 million. They are affordable when purchased for the right use case and are very much an untapped market. And one thing I would suggest to anyone thinking about investing or diving into the cryptocurrency space is to not discount NFTs from your trading strategy. There is a lot of opportunity in the space to make some serious money with these things, and not just in the short term, but in the long term also. And even if you don't want to delve into the world of these, well, hopefully you now know what they are and just how powerful they can be and will be in the future. You've been watching Paul Tutton. Thanks again for watching, and I'll chat to you again real soon.